Hey, it's Foofles, and here's my swimming pool. It's all broken up into pieces contained in these force fields. Far out. Let's try swimming in it. You're probably wondering how to make your own sackbot that can swim in these funky pools. So let's make one from scratch. The first thing we need is a brand new sackbot to work with. The important thing behind all of this is keeping track of whether or not it's in the water. And to keep track of the state of objects, I like to use a selector. So let's put one down. As usual, I like state 1 to represent the default state. And in this case, the default state will also include the idle animation. Let's also put some microchips down to get organized. We're going to have one microchip for movement on the land, and the other will represent movement in the water. The microchip for movement on land will be very simple. All it will do is enable a wireless controllinator. So let's put one down now. We're going to set this to be a wireless receiver on the red frequency. And also make sure that override sackbot is set to yes. This handles all the basic controls for movement on land. Now let's set the states of the selector to their appropriate chip. State 1 will be for movement on land. And state 2 will be for movement in water. We can be a little more organized by putting stickers on the microchips. We can remove the default one with the sticker tool, and let's replace it with something appropriate. How about a rock on the chip for movement on land, and a wave for movement in the water? Every volume of water has a hitbox of invisible holographic material with a tag called water. So to know if we're in water, all we need is an impact sensor that will look for that tag. So we're looking for tag label water. We also want to know when we're out of the water, so let's put a NOT gate down as well. So basically, impact sensor on, switch to state 2, impact sensor NOT, switch to state 1. Very simple. Let's try to get a little organized. So what about the Sackbot himself and the player controlling him? Well, let's deal with that right now. Let's set him to copy the costume of his owner. That means anyone sitting in a controllinator that affects him will change his costume. That includes other sackbots. And we'll set the animation style to Sackboy to cut down on that weird metallic sound when he moves. For the player, he's going to have a controllinator sitting on a piece of holographic material. And this holographic material is going to follow the sackbot around. That means we can keep him in the view without having to use movie cameras. So let's give it a good sized radius as well as making it a wireless transmitter on the red frequency. And we're going to make it invisible. This way if the player sits in it he will also be invisible. And of course set the holographic material to be invisible as well. Now let's put a couple things down on the controlinator board. Since it needs to follow the sackbot around, we're going to put a gyroscope just in case to keep it level. It never hurts. Give it maximum speed and strength. But most importantly, we need a follower. That's not a follower. This is a follower. And we're going to set it to follow the tag called player. Of course, set it to maximum speed and strength to make sure it's as close to him as possible. Give it a good sized radius. And we're going to give it the tag.
declare. That means we need to put this tag on the Sackbot himself. So as soon as we put that tag down, you're going to see if our follower works. And bam, it snaps right to him. Okay, so that works perfectly. And the controls themselves are wireless, so we don't have to worry about that control nader anymore. So what about our routine to move underwater? Let's place a control nader and set it to be a wireless receiver on the red frequency. But we'll set override sackbot to no. We want to make our own movement routine. Let's place an advanced mover and give it some really important tweaks. We'll set the speed to about 5 and we'll max out the strength of the acceleration deceleration. But very importantly, we'll give it input action speed scale. Very important if we'd like to press a button to make them move faster, just like in the regular game. So let's hook up the left stick to the mover. Left, right, out of the stick. We'll go into left, right, input of the mover. And up, down, output of the stick. We'll go up, down, input of the mover. Now here's the interesting part. If you have multiple signals going into an OR gate, it'll output the maximum of those signals. Let's put down a battery and set it to 50%. This will represent moving 50% of the speed of the mover if we're not pressing X. If we press X, it will output a value of 100% overriding that 50%. So this gives us a very easy method of having the speed if we're not pressing X. So how about the actual swimming animation? Very simple. Let's put down a behavior chip and set it to acting. As well as, of course, setting the style to Sackboy so it doesn't make any weird robotic noises. So let's record some basic swimming type thing. Gorgeous. And set it to loop relative so it'll keep going from wherever he is at the time. We also want to put down a rocket rotator so he'll face the way he's moving. Very useful tool. I'm going to also put an anti-gravity chip and another one. You'll see why. This one will have 100% dampening. That might not make sense, but when he first enters the water, I want to remove all his velocity. So we're going to set a counter down, set it to have a target of 1, and when it outputs, it'll activate that dampener for one cycle. It will then reset itself. So you see, it just removes whatever velocity it has at the time. This battery will turn everything on when this chip comes on. So let's dampen, let's set the swimming animation, and let's set anti-gravity. Let's also put a little bubbly sound, a little ambience. Never hurts. We'll also hook that up to the battery. And now I think it's time to give it a whirl. Well, that's cool and everything, but what about all the splashing and bubbles? The splash is just this hologram being emitted and destroyed. It also has a splashing sound that's played on creation. Let's put down an emitter and see how that works. We're going to select that hologram as the dynamically emitted object. What that means is that if we change the object, the emitter will follow suit. Very useful. One of my favorite features in the game. Make sure to set input action to emit once. 
ignore parent velocity and we'll set the lifetime very low because the effect is going to come from it being destroyed. So you're going to set the lifetime to 0.1 and uh, emit one at a time and destroy effect splat my favorite effect. Let's see how that looks. That's cool and all, but we need it to work only when he's hitting the water or coming out of the water. Easy way to do this. Let's just make two emitters. One for when he's hitting the water, and one for when he's out of the water. You could probably do it with one emitter, but this is just simple. Let's see how it works. So how about the bubbles? All they are, are the game's default water projectiles being emitted and moved up. Unfortunately, we're running short on time for part 1, so check part 2 for the rest.